Okay. Thank you. A uh, good afternoon. Uh, good uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Junichiro Kawamoto from NHK, the Japan Broadcasting Corporation. Uh, this pre presentation is about broadcasting station system. So I I'll introduce the device we developed for 8K video transmission over IP internet protocol and present experimental results demonstrating it practically. But first, I would like to introduce my company. NHK is Japan's public broadcaster, and we deliver TV program with terrestrial and satellite broadcasting. And we are currently providing 2K high definition television, or HDTV, and we are getting ready to launch 8K ultra high definition television, or UHD TV, services. I'll start my presentation by giving you an overview of 8K UHD TV and explaining live program production using internet protocol or IP technology, which is gaining attention in the broadcast industry. Next, I'll discuss two issues about related to 8K remote production and using IP technology and describe the device we developed for 8K video transmission over IP. I'll then present the results of two experimental result experiments and finally, I'll conclude my presentation. Okay, let's start by ta taking a look at 8K UHD TV and live program production using IP technology. 8K UHD TV has 33 million pixels and 16 times greater than that of 2K HD TV. And it has 22.2 multi sound channel sounds. And it was mainly developed in NHK and has been standardized by the ITU. This is a service roadmap of 8K in Japan. In 2016, 8K test broadcasting began in Rio Olympic Games. And in December of this year, NHK will launch the world's first 8K commercial broadcasting. This graph shows the transition of the data rate between SDI and Ethernet signals as represented by the orange and blue lines respectively. The use of SDI signals for professional production began around 1990. SDI signals are commonly used to connect studio cameras with digital switches in broadcast stations. Around, around 2000, uh, the data rate of Ethernet surpassed that of SDI, and now 400 gigabit Ethernet is now the standard and the interface speed of Ethernet signals continue to increase. Here, here, are the here are the data rate for uncompressed video. The data rate for 2K HDTV is 1.2 gigabit per second, so it can transmit using one coaxial cable. On the other hand, uh, the data, data rate for 4K 60 Hz progressive is 10 gigabit per second, and 8K 16 Hz progressive is 40 gigabit per second, and 8K 120 Hz progressive is 143 gigabit per second. So these uh, cannot transmit using one coaxial cable uh, which means the system complicated. So we are now trying to uh, develop 
Ethernet signal over uh, the 8K professional signal using Ethernet signal. This slide shows the difference between SDI and AP IP signals. With SDI, uh, video signals are transmitted from the venue to the broadcasting station. which can be up to 100 kilometers away in one-to-one -one and unidirectional manner. With IP, video signals can be transmitted over distance exceeding 100 kilometers. Various types of signals can be much flexed and transmitted bidirectionally and at lower cost. In the program production systems currently used by our broadcasting stations, post-production work is done on a system that uses an IP-based network. This enables several editors on different network stations to work on the same data at the same time. On the other hand, live production is done using an SDI signal-based network. Such networks have been used for many years and feature low delay and stability. Since constructing and maintaining a system that uses two kinds of signals is not efficient from the viewpoint of cost, a live production system using an IP network is being developed. It will be used to sim simultaneously transmit both kinds of signals. Standardization of live production using IP is underway in the Society of Motion Picture and Television Engineers, SMPTE, the standardization organization for professional production systems. Starting at the end of last year, the SMPTE issued uh, the ST2110 suite of standards for professional media transported over managed IP networks. They cover transmitting uncompressed video and audio signals over IP networks. Even now, standardization such as for IP transmission on compressed signal is ongoing. There are several benefits of using IP for live production. In terms of efficiency, its use enables the number of cables to be reduced by multiplexing video, audio, and control signals onto one cable. Its use can also reduce device and line costs by taking advantage of the remarkable progress in speeding up and commoditization IP technology. In terms of flexibility, its use enables the sharing of devices connected to a network. This makes it possible to freely combine devices to build a virtual studio. Small local stations can thereby use expensive equipment at the broadcast station. Moreover, remote production can be achieved by controlling video cameras at a remote loca location from a staffed location. Let's look at this remote production in more detail. With remote production, live production can be performed from a broadcast station by sharing the venue's live video in real time between the venue and the broadcast station. Engineers can operate from the broadcast station without being physically present at the venue. Moreover, the system can switch between several venues instantaneously. Okay, we've taken a look at 8K UHD TV and live program production using IP. Let's now consider two issues related to 8K remote production using IP technology and take a look at the device we developed for 8K video transmission over IP. 8K has an extremely high data rate. For example, 
uncompressed 8K video data rate is 40 gigabit per second for 8K 60 hertz. So uh, remote production requires sharing videos between venue and broadcast station with high image quality and low delay. To achieve 8K remote production, we need to find a way to efficiently transmit high image quality 8K video with low delay from venue to broadcast station. To achieve this, we identified two requirements for the proposed device. The first is that 8K program video is efficiently transmitted with high image quality and low latency. The second is that IP format signals are sent using 10 gigabit Ethernet transmission. For image quality, peak signal to noise ratio, PSNR, is set to 40 dB. And for latency, target total delay in signal, a single direction of real-time remote production is set to time for one video frame. For example, 16.7 milliseconds for 60 hertz frame video or less. And to enable various types of signals to be sent by directionally, signals are multiplexed into IP signals and one or two 10 gigabit Ethernet lines are used for transmission. This slide shows the application area of proposed device. The horizontal axis represents the transmission distance, and the vertical axis shows image quality and latency. With conventional field device, a high quality, low delay, and compressed transmission device is used for distances up to 100 kilometers, while a compression device is used for distance up to 100 kilometer. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, with medium image quality and delay of several seconds is used for longer distance. Now, with the development of an 8K IP transmission device, it is possible to realize 8K video transmission with high image quality and low latency by using a relatively inexpensive 10 gigabit Ethernet line, regardless of the distance. <laughs> this enables the realization of 8K remote production, which had been nearly impossible. This slide shows the configuration and the specific specifications of the device we developed for transmitting 8K signals over IP device. In this work, 8K 16 Hz progressive video signals transmitted through an SDI interface and lightweight compressed and mapped to RTP UDP IP packets. The resulting video signals and audio control and synchronization, synchronization signals are multiplexed and then transmitted over 10 gigabit Ethernet line. The SDI interface has four 12 giga SDI connections. The Ethernet interface is the 10 gigabit Ethernet interface. The lightweight compression is done using the Tico codec. I'll explain the detail of this on the next slide. The uncompressed 8K 16 Hz progressive data rate is 40 gigabit per second, and the compressed data rate is 8 gigabit per second. Therefore, the compression ratio is 5. The latency between transmitter input and receiver output is less than 1 millisecond. Uh, several kinds of lightweight compression technology have been developed. The TICO codec was developed by Intopix in Belgium company and has an 8K format. It is now available and has been standardized as JPEG XS. We selected the TICO codec on the basis of the available format and the trend in standardization. 
A new mapping method is used in this device that reduces image degradation due to signal quality degradation. This figure shows the conventional and the proposed mapping. Lightweight compression divides one video frame into several compression units and compresses each one by wavelet transform line by line. The signal after the lightweight compression is called a slice, and the slice signal is mapped to the packet. In the conventional mapping, slice signals are mapped sequentially to fixed length packets without considering the slice boundary. This means that different slice signals can be mapped to the same packet. In the proposed mapping, different slice signals are mapped to different packets. If a slice boundary packet is lost, for example, in this case, packet number two is, packet number two is lost. With conventional mapping, image degradation is observed over two compression units, unit zero and one. In contrast, with the proposed mapping, the range of image degradation is limited to only one compression, unit zero. The reason such deterioration appears is that since the slice signal is generated by performing line-by-line wavelet transformation in units of compression units. So previous errors in the slice signal are propagated. With the proposed mapping, the data rate increases due to the addition of padding. However, the increase is only about 0.8%, so the effect on the total transmission rate is negligible. Let's turn now to the results of the two experiments we conducted to evaluate the performance of the developed device, multi-channel audio remote production and real-time camera control from 1,000 kilometers. In April 2018, remote production of multi-channel audio was carried out using our proposed device. This figure shows the setup. From the venue, 8K real-time video and 192-channel audio were transmitted to the broadcast station where real-time audio mixing was performed. The mixed audio was returned to the venue for switcher. The line was 10 gigabit Ethernet and covered a distance of about 12, uh, 20 kilometers. These are photographs taken at the venue, which was the Takarazuka Theater in central Tokyo. The space available to us at the venue was limited, so we were unable to perform conventional A2K program production from a large outside broadcasting van. We just parked a small van carrying the proposed device and related equipment at an inside loading dock. There are photographs taken at the broadcast station in the NHK headquarters building. An 8K multi-channel audio mixing studio was used for remote audio mixing. This is the system rack room. Since we were able to use existing station facilities, the setup time for remote production was shortened and the production was conformatively carried out in a spacious work area. This slide illustrates the video and the audio latencies. The video latency between the lightweight compressed A2K transmitter input and receiver output was less than one millisecond. In contrast, the audio latency was around three milliseconds due to buffering in the equipment that converted audio to IP. Nevertheless, both the video and audio signals were transmitted with one video frame delay or less, which met our latency requirement. At the NHK STRL open house in May 2018, 1,000 km IP network transmission was conducted using our proposed device. 
This figure shows the setup. The output from an 8K 60Hz progressive video camera at the venue was compressed with the proposed device, which has a compression ratio of 5, and transmitted 1,000 km over 10 gigabit Ethernet line. The decompressed video was displayed on an A2K monitor at the broadcast station. In addition, we remotely controlled the camera from the broadcast station. We measured the total latency, the traffic on the transmission line, and the phase lag between the precision time, protocol master and thread. The total latency in one direction was about 11 milliseconds, which is sufficiently less than the time for one video frame, 16.7 milliseconds. Therefore, the venue camera could be conformatively controlled from the broadcast station. The upper graph shows the traffic fluctuation from the venue to the broadcast station for the measurement. The Simple Network Management Protocol, or SNMP, was used to record, record the data rate through the switch in the broadcast station at two, 20 second intervals. The value plotted were obtained by averaging the results of a five minute interval. The result showed that the stream of about 8.3 gigabit per second was constantly transmitted. The lower graph shows an enlargement of the upper graph. The data rate fluctuation was about 100 megabit per second which is attributed to the SNMP response error of the switch. In summary, we have developed a lightweight compressed 8K over IP transmission device that enables live remote production. Experimental variation demonstrated its practically. It should thus enable realization of real-time 8K remote live program production. Thank you very much for your attention. So do you have any questions?